Hello and welcome to Newspeak, the New Culture Forum's look at the weekly news agenda. With me, as usual, I'm pleased to say, is our senior fellow, Dr. Philip Kisley. And indeed, special guest this week is Amy Gallagher, the campaigner and the woman behind Stand Up To Woke. Now, um, we've had a few issues this week that are all kind of interconnected in some ways. Uh, there is what appears to be audience segregation going on in theatre land, so we're going to talk about that. Also about uh, the Equality Commission's kerfuffle recently where they're trying to possibly oust the chairman of the thing. And we will briefly discuss as well the extraordinary and record levels of migration which were announced this week. Um, if I can start first of all, Philip, this has had quite a bit of pu publicity, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's about one performance, apparently, at the Theatre Royal in Stratford, which is in the East End. Mm -hmm. But what is the kind of what is actually the nitty gritty of the of this issue? Well, this is a story of our times in the sense that it's it's about segregation, but it's also about racial hierarchy and it's about the demonization of whiteness. Mm. So this is a duo, I'll get this right, I think they're called Tambo and Bones and they are a, a, a rap duo and they're BLM activists. And the theater has said that it would be advisable if white people stayed away from their performance because um, then black people can be themselves and they can enjoy the I'm, I'm not joking, I'm not making it up mm. but they can they can enjoy the performance without the pressure of the white gaze the white gaze as in the white is in eyes not white gaze as in like me the, the <laughs> 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 You know maybe I mean. that as well no, maybe no. that as well right uh, so the, the the gaze is a, I, sh I should just kind of uh, explain this the gaze is a, a, a ridiculous theoretical construct and it actually right. comes from the 1970s and film studies so it used to be called the male gaze and this was uh, essentially men the, the evil of men having eyes and watching a screen okay it's oh, terrible right. so you're undressing women with your eyes you're imposing your power so on these people Z -E. Z -E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not gays. Uh, so, so it comes from um, film studies, and it's been appropriated by all of these lunatics. So, there's the, you uh, know, it, it goes into gender studies, and and now it's part of critical race theory. Right. And it's essentially um, uh, saying that uh, your presence as a white person, particularly a white man, is problematic is right. it somehow taints the experience for everybody else yeah. because you are essentially because of your skin color wicked and i'm i'm not it, that sounds ridiculous mm. but but that's essentially what it is this is just mm. pure segregation isn't it yeah it's, uh, it's i mean it's quite extraordinary i mean this whole idea of the the gaze um as you said coming from feminist theory but this is the way critical theory works in that it there's a, a original theory which is itself stupid and illogical and then it yeah. gets watered down and down and then changed and a new identity yeah. group gets tacked in and then you end up with this notion of white gaze which is just what white people looking at, at yeah. other people yeah. other groups other people yeah. um and it's it is racialized thinking because essentially what they're saying is when white people look at other people who are of different race they're they're thinking the same thing and they're they're looking at people for the same reason, mm -hmm. so it's a it's a generalisation, um, and it's 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 extremely oh, it's, I mean it's racist. I mean it's, well, it's, it's and it's this shift away as well from the idea of heart. I mean they actually said we need to be kept safe from the white gaze. Mm -hmm. So we've gone from safety from words mm -hmm. to safety from being looked at or you know. Yeah. And, um, and and safe from their own it's it's their own narrative that's going on in their own heads about you know the, what other people are thinking about them which mm. they don't know yeah. um, it's in, it's <sighs> it's projecting wickedness yes. onto onto people because of the color of their the, skin yes you know? which is racist yeah, which is which, which which is the essence of racist isn't it yes so yeah it's it's extraordinary it's um and it's it's been quite i mean the reaction to it has been a bit mixed uh, even from some conservative commentators have been sort of saying um well you know if people want to put on a performance that's just for black people you know th that's their freedom mm. you know that that's up to them but the thing is it, it's the singling out of white people that mm, that's the mm, issue they're not mm. saying we encourage black people to come 
which is still a, a, I, I think, think an old thing to say, but they're actually saying mm. we want to exclude mm. white, specifically white people. Mm. Um, not Asian people. Actually. No, exactly, or Jewish people. It, it's no, always it's white, isn't, isn't it? it? Mm. Um, and I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, this isn't a new thing. You know, no. this happens all the time. Not necessarily always as explicitly, yeah. but in in spirit, mm. this is absolutely and totally part of the theatre world, which is the most you know ridiculous and extreme of, of all the art mm. forms in terms of identity politics. Um, I, I'm pleased, in a sense, I'm pleased with myself that I still get outraged by it, mm. but segregation was happening on campus years ago, six, seven, yeah. eight years ago, uh, where women were being told that, oh, actually, you can't, you can't go into this particular place because it's a, a place of Muslim worship. On, on university campuses. Yeah, this yeah. is years ago this was happening. Yeah, yeah. So I, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me because I'm completely used to it, but that doesn't mean, I mean, that, that's a problem in its own right, isn't it? We get used to these things, so we skip over yeah. them. Yeah. We must always be outraged and we must always comment on it and push it, back on it. Isn't it actually illegal? I mean, well, it the, the, well, the excuse is that they're saying is that we haven't outright banned mm. white people. We've just asked them not to come and mm. you can still come if you're, if, you're, if you're white or if you're black identifying, so, which is very confusing. They're now yeah. using the language of the trans ideology. Yeah, yeah, We've got yeah. to race, so you presumably a white person could turn up and just say, well, I'm, I'm black. I'm black. Yeah, yeah. And th this is how this is the insidious nature of critical race theory yeah. and that it, it has all these l l maneuvers in order to push things right up to the boundaries of what's illegal mm. and then walk it back and say, oh no, we said white identifying or mm. we, we just we just asked white people to, not to come. We didn't ban them. So they can be they sort of take it right up to the line of what's what's racist and, and, and they will say <laughs> things like you know if you decide to, to to turn up to this thing being a yeah, white person yes. they will say well it's not that you can't go <coughs> there but do you think that your your presence there might be a provocative you know yeah, provocative yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so, so, this, so it's that kind of thing this, this i mean this is really uh what you're completely involved in at the yes. moment isn't yes, it my, actually my legal uh, case, i yeah. should add you probably know because Amy's been on the show and she recently spoke at our conference as indeed did uh, Philip um, but you're basically well you you are certain part way through a legal action aren't you but yeah. it's it is about anti-white racism really yes, isn't yes. it in the, yeah. in the NHS world? yeah <coughs> that's that's what my case is about is mm. about that I disagreed with critical race theory I mean at the time even like, sort of two or three years ago it was pretty shocking when you heard this stuff it was mm. to me the whole theory of whiteness it was initially a very American thing, yeah. and, um, and it felt a bit like, well, Americans always go too far, it won't come over here. Yeah. And then it started coming through in the institutions, and now you're seeing it in pop popular culture yeah. more and more, like at this theatre. Um, and as I said, the, the theories get sort of changed and watered down, so they don't even mean what they originally mean, which was something stupid anyway, mm -hmm. and they just get used as a weapon, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's what it is. I mean, yeah. they're, they're so broad brush, they can be applied to anything in a stupid way, right. and, and that's essentially the essence of, of identity politics. Mm. It's, it's catch-all, it's, you know, we can, we, can just, we can just target you with this mm. thing, and, and if, you, if you respond to it, as you know, if you respond mm. to it, or if you if you if you kind of question it, then you're racist yeah. or you're sexist or you're just being what we think you are anyway. Yeah. These people are um, at the the theatre wall uh, in Stratford. They are presumably funded in part, at least, by the Arts Council. I would have thought so. They will be. I they will be funded so, by. Yeah. It, it'll either be the Arts Council England or it'll be some other arm's length organisation. Which, so you know, indirectly taxpayers' money. Yeah, yes. Right. Mm. Yes. I mean, shouldn't they kind of lose it if they do this kind of stuff? You know, if it, if you start putting up saying, uh, you know, we encourage only black people mm. to come to this, to discourage white people to come, mm. I would have thought that's a, that's a losing issue. Well, I mean, you would think so in any sane world, but if anybody who's had anything to do with these arms length organisations, and we've talked about Arts Council England before, it's the it's the 
you know, mm. it's the hub of total insanity. Mm. So there's no way that they would, they, they <coughs> would, you know, that would be a, an absolute positive. That's probably part of, mm -hmm. you know, their, their funding requirements mm -hmm. is that we're being, because they will frame it, it again, it's this use of language, isn't yeah. it? We're being actively anti-racist. Anti mm -hmm. Segregation mm -hmm. is anti-racist. It's turning on the head. The, you so know, basically, the if you say, thing. if you know what their game is, mm. Mm. Uh, and you say, no, I'm sorry, I don't go along with that. I'm not going to go along with the anti-racist thing. There's all in that case, obviously you're racist. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. The whole idea of anti-racism, it comes from um, Ibram X. Kendi, mm. who essentially said, in order to fight racism and discrimination, you need to discriminate now. Mm. You, need to, right. you need to do right. more discrimination in order to make up for past discrimination. It, it's, yeah. so it's, it's two things, isn't it? One, it's Kafkaesque, mm. it's a trap. Whatever you mm. say, you, you can't get out of it. You're racist if you do, you're racist if you mm. don't. It's like the witch mm. dunking thing. Um, so I, I think I, I think that that that's one thing. Um, the other thing is that it's it's an industry, mm. and and it's commercially viable. You know, this mm. idea of revenge yeah. is yeah. appeals to an awful lot of people, yes. and it's commercially viable. Speaking of uh, you know industries, uh, there's been this issue this week as well, hasn't there, Amy? Amy of um, it's the it is the equalities and what is it? Human, Human Rights, Rights Commission. Commission. And it's just sort of like eating itself, isn't yeah. it? I mean, what, can <laughs> exactly. you explain what's going on there? So, um, one of the chairwomans of the Equality and Human Rights Commission, yeah. uh, Baroness Faulkner, who's mm -hmm. a former politician, she's a member of the House of Lords, she joined the Equalities and Human Rights Commission in 2020. And even then, it was known that her views on sex-based rights were that she believes in biological sex as most people do yeah, yeah. Um, and she's maintained that f the whole time yep. um, what's happened recently is her and other members of the Equalities and Human Rights Commission are re-evaluating the Equalities Act of with, 2010 yes yeah. with regards to sex and gender and essentially making it clearer the distinction between mm. sex and gender because there's two categories there's protection for people who have gone through gender reassignment surgery and protection for se women essentially or, right. or men right. set the category of sex and obviously now the word woman is up for grabs <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. You know, as, as is biological sex so you can essentially claim to be discriminated as a woman if you're a man dressed as a woman or you know it, yeah. it's all getting very confusing so they're saying essentially we need to make it clearer to uh, preserve women's sex-based rights that when mm. we're talking about sex mm. discrimination we're talking about biological sex right. in order to safeguard you know uh, uh, single sex spaces for women and women's rights within sports mm. and so on so she's on the side of the angels then she's actually, on the, yeah, yes, she's, yeah she's saying w when we say women we mean biological women yeah, which yeah, is what it yeah. means anyway but they're trying to make mm. that clearer um, and not not so not in such a coincidence um, at the same time that she's saying this there's been a lot of flurry of complaints against her essentially from mm. the civil services they've compiled a dossier of over 40 complaints about her conduct mm. um, ranging right at this time yes right at yeah. this time yeah I exactly mean, i mean one of the really <laughs> interesting ones is uh, they feel psychologically unsafe so. Yeah. Because I think she's raised her eyebrows or raised yeah. her raised her. Really? So it's yeah. the gaze again, yeah. isn't it? This is this yeah. is, this is her gaze. And this Damn is you know let's, let's 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 understand <laughs> what she is. She's she's from you know a, a Lib Dem background. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. couldn't be more snowflakey. She just happens to be gender critical. Yes. Uh, and the the civil service who were in the running actually for the most despised group along with uh, <laughs> Just Stop Oil at the moment, the civil service are pushing back on this so much and essentially saying that if you believe in sex-based rights, if you, if you are gender critical, then you are a hate criminal. That's yeah. essentially what they're saying. Yeah, she's, I mean, they've accused <coughs> her of various things, um, n not chairing meetings properly, mm. being too domineering, um, bullying. Bullying. This is a great new thing. This isn't is, it? yeah, yeah weaponising yeah. of anti bullying yeah. legislation. They, they feel legislation. unsafe. Yeah, they, they feel, feel unsafe. unsafe. Yeah. Exactly. And what is this thing it, about bloke in lipstick? What's yeah, that? apparently she made a comment which she denies um, describing, I think it was a, a transgender performer as a, as a bloke in lipstick. Mm. Um, he's the one who's been in the kind of new. He's been sorry, in the She's the one who's been in the new. He, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this, this individual has been in the news sort of heading this campaign yeah. against this. Yeah. this mm. uh, against Baroness Faulkner essentially saying that she's transphobic and that this comment is discriminatory 
um, because she described a man as a, as a man. But you know the people are doing, sorry, uh, be, be being dense here, the people who are doing the complaining, these 40 complaints, yes. you mentioned civil, civil service. So the, the, this um, uh, Equality and, and Human Rights Commission mm. is a civil service entity, is it? It's it's serviced by the civil service. Oh, it is. Yeah. So right. so they mm. so um, they implement yeah. the uh, you know the decisions, the policy, and all the rest of it. And you know, as with Parliament, yeah. uh, the civil service has a huge amount. They they flex their muscle. They have a huge mm. amount of power, and they are, in lots of ways, they're the essence, the centre of woke activism mm, because mm, they're mm. at the centre of power. Yes. Yes, they are, yeah, they have a lot of power despite being unelected. Mm. And it, I mean, this whole this whole um, issue yeah. with this lady, it has echoes, although it's very different, but it has echoes of what happened with Dominic Raab, yeah. although he's a very different politician. Well, and, yeah. uh, but they, it was the same thing. They just had a list of very um, small complaints yeah. which compiled together mm. meant that he got pushed out. And essentially things ranged from, I don't know, push, putting his fist on the table or mm. throwing tomatoes out of a, of a sandwich mm. bag and all sorts of things. So this is a real thing. And then it sticks, it sticks. It sticks. You know. This is something that sort of people are slightly waking up you know, to this whole idea that, wait a minute, um, you know, if you've been sceptical about a kind of ideological opposition mm -hmm. unelected mm -hmm. yeah. you can't afford to be anymore because mm -hmm. they are gradually targeting whatever yes. you think of the Tories they are gradually targeting aren't they conservative conservative ministers I mean sort of Bra Bra Braverman mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. example yeah, yeah she's constantly mm -hmm. under attack yeah. yeah but it's 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 a it's a specific example of a, of a broader trend and, and we've covered it on the channel you know this idea of the power of human resources yeah. departments mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. it's 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 a it's part of an organisation uh, running something mm. from the back seat, isn't yeah. it? And, and th that's essentially what the civil service do with the mm. HRC. Mm. That's what they do in Parliament, and 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 it's and it's you know it's a it's the essence of wickedness. What's the actual kind of what's it? How's it looking at the moment with this case? And I mean, is it? There's been complaints. Is she in danger of having to resign or what? Um, potentially, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. she's. Yeah. I mean, she's going to face a disciplinary I assume yeah. she's had to she may have to step down she she seems as that she's preparing a, a robust defense and and she sounds I don't you know read what you will into it but she sounds very confident that mm. she can mm. she can address mm. all of these issues mm. because the kinds of examples um, they've provided they're actually they're great for her in a yeah. way because in any any sane world, mm. anybody would say, "Well, that's that's ridiculous," yeah. you know. Uh, you know, grow a pair. So if all of these things get out into the media, get circulated on Twitter, social media, and all the rest of it, then it, it could probably only do her good. But it's it's. I mean, she should be the most. She's she's a woman. She's a a woman of colour or yeah. non-white yeah. person. She's yeah. in extreme position of authority. She's in the House yeah. of Lords. She's yeah. a you know chairwoman of the the human uh, Qualities and human rights commission. She's a former politician, and so on. And it. I mean, it's it's pretty scary when someone like that can mm, be mm. you know attacked and it, you know th those are the sorts of authorities you look to to kind of protect you yes. um you know especially the equality and human rights commission mm. and actually even those people aren't safe so mm. it's it is set is setting how I mean, we keep saying this but setting a dangerous precedent you know yeah. some people actually want to get rid of the equalities act altogether don't they yeah yeah i mean would you subscribe to that no, mm. either that or just comp or seriously reform it. I mean, what she was trying to do for, mm. for, was in revising was to suggest that uh, it's purely, as you say, biological sex yes. is made quite clear that mm. it's about they're talking about that, not gender, because at the moment yeah. mm. it's confusing, apparently. Mm. Yeah, as you said. Yeah, exactly. On. Well, the yeah. word woman is. But isn't it amazing how these people sort of eat their own? I mean, you know, here we are. You'd think, wouldn't you, mm. that the you know Equality Human Rights Commission would be the epicenter of another yes. one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, they yeah. are so authoritarian. Yeah. They're actually not interested in human rights. They're not interested in no. equality. No. The equality is the last thing they're interested in. They're interested in maintaining their ideology and imposing yes. their ideology on everybody else. And I think the other thing about it, which is really telling, is the fact that I think she's about 68, isn't she? Mm. So there's a generational thing here yeah. happening yeah. as well. And, and I think that's really yeah. important. I think, I mean, trans activism is becoming one of the most authoritarian ideologies oh, yeah. possibly after like Islamic fundamentalism yeah. yes. it's people are that becoming that scared of it and nobody's safe as, as we've seen with this this lady who mm. who should 
be safe. If anybody's going to be safe, it should mm. be her. Yeah. You know, you um, get people occasionally, you know, mainstream Tories or conservative commentators and things saying, saying, oh, you know what, there's a, I sense the tide is turning, you know. <laughs> and then so basically something happens and you sort of think, it's, it's, it's no right way. It's like this wall. week we had Ed Davey didn't we? <coughs> saying basically some women have quite clearly got penises. I don't know what his yes, experience is to come up with that. I know. But I mean, you know, this we had Keir Starmer yeah. trying desperately to row back, wasn't he, on certain things, you know. But And then we have the, you know, this is a, well, I, I hasten to call it a serious political party, mm. but you know what I mean. Mm. I mean, it is a traditional party. Um, we, we've we moved not, well, one step forward, two mm. back, surely. Yeah. I mean, well, you, you, you <coughs> I mean, I, I'm of a fairly, you know, um, I, I, you know, I, I like to think things are getting better, uh, and, I'm, and I'm constantly. I seem to remember you actually spoke about that I'm very thing. Exactly, <laughs> but I, I'm constantly disappointed. And you, and you think, mm. you know, being an optimist or being slightly yeah. optimistic, being sensibly optimistic, considering what we're facing, and then you get the leader of, a, as you say, a major and in inverted commas political party saying you know well obviously uh, uh, yeah, women can clearly. have penises yeah. you just think right we're right back to square mm. one yeah. and it's clown world well at least i suppose yeah. people know where they where they sound with yeah. these people in that if yeah you know yeah. You, they can you know. choose yeah it will alienate a lot of people from mm. the lib dems of the leaders saying i mean they don't know what a woman is another thing that you you hear a lot you know as well as oh well this is something that only really exercises the minds of commentary out uh, maybe you know, academia or, or whatever mm. would you say that the majority of people that you know or work with how do they take this on board as being a, a thing uh, uh, you know I mean do, would they agree with Ed Davey well the, the people who I work with would all agree with yeah. Ed Davey they're, they're, they're obsessed with the trans ideology in in terms of the uh, the country um, I don't think people know how authoritarian it really mm. is, but I think they're going to know uh, soon. When um, I think I think what's going to happen is um, children who mm. are who are uh, who are having you know uh, surgeries, who are having puberty blockers, who are indoctrinated in ten years' time when they come out of this and they look back mm. and they say what mm. the hell happened to me where were the adults mm. how were the institutions captured so easily mm. we want answers because you ruined my life i think it's going to be a longitudinal thing but i think the pushback is going to be massive and i think it's going to be from the young people who are going through it now mm. and who are advocates of this kind of thing because they're young and it's the new thing mm. when they finally realize what's happened yeah. to them and their lives and bodies are ruined then i think that's when the real pushback will happen do you kind of are you optimistic about that well i think you're right it is as soon as you think you're you, you're getting head where you're moving mm. forward there's all these you get mm. pulled back i mean there was a recent case as well of the teacher jonathan yeah. no, joshua sutcliffe mm -hmm. who's banned been banned from the profession of teaching for misgendering uh, mm. a, a pupil who mm. uh, a female pupil who says she's a boy and he said course, actually banned from, banned teaching, from teaching for life i think until uh, 2025 when mm. he can reappeal the mm. ban mm. in the most part. Mm. Although I, I um, did see, uh, I don't know whether you, anybody saw a clip of the Piers Morgan interview that he did um, and he did sound pretty bonkers oh when right. he was talking about <laughs> sleep. But, 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 but that, that doesn't detract, that doesn't well, detract, no, it from, doesn't the, detract from the issue, the is issue it? which, really which is, is about gender but yes. when he was talking about sin and people must be punished for sin and he's a Christian I think well you know maybe mm. think about Jesus a bit more. Yeah mm. I mean I think he was working, I was a maths teacher but he was working in a Christian school and he did a bible group. I think he probably has, I mean it sounds as though he has said some things that he may be, he has been a bit outspoken I guess yeah, you could yeah. say but I mean it's it's terrifying for children to to children are always pushing against boundaries because they're trying to find out where the boundaries are mm. and what they can get away with so they can get guidance from their parents or teachers mm. and now now teachers and parents can't push back mm. that you know teachers yes. children now have an extraordinary amount of power where you mm. can say you've hurt my feelings because you misgendered me um, and then the teacher gets pulled into a disciplinary so that mm. nobody, there's, it's the complete erosion of authority. Mm. Um, 
for, and, and that's not good for the children, actually. That, you no, know, it's, it's, it's catastrophic mm. for the children. Yeah, psychologically, longer uh, term it is, yeah. because mm. they're, they're very confused about sexuality and gender, as teenagers are, because they're trying to work that mm. very murky yeah. area yeah. out. They're looking to the adults, you know, w what, is a, what is a boy, what is a girl, what yeah. does it mean to be a woman, what does it mean to be a man, what, does it, what, I what is all of this? Mm. And they're saying outlandish things to see how the adults will react and the adults just go along with it. Mm. Uh, and so the, 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 the child is just left at sea, not mm. knowing what, you know. And, and actually in the schools, th they don't not only go along with it, they, they actually encourage it. Yeah. And so what you get with, with um, young people coming to university, which is different now to how it used to be, they used to come with um, open minds, lots of ideas, really challenging you mm. on a free speech basis. Now it's completely the opposite. They've got these very cliched, off the peg, virtue ridden mm. uh, uh, ideas, which are all the same. Um, and it's the most depressing thing in the mm. world. Mm. Mm. And people are acting like the, you know, things are settled on this issue. Most people, uh, most people don't understand what trans is. I mean, I don't really anymore because it changes. It's so, yes. or so many. So yes. when people say, you know, he misgendered a trans child. The immediate response: what, what is a trans child? Mm. What are mm. we talking about here? Yeah. Because you can't you can't change your gender under under the gender recognition act to after eighteen. Mm. So w what are we talking about when you say a trans child? Just and and, it, and it's in that way it's really sinister when they're talking about chan, trans children yeah. in in any way. Trans or babies, is really, yeah, is really yeah. sinister. But it's actually quite hilarious when they historicise it and they yeah. say, well, trans people in the 18th century, oh, you know, they are, you know, trans people in caves, you know, and, yeah, and, yeah, and I'm yeah. not joking. They, are, they have actually <laughs> talked about trans people in caves. Well, this caves. is what I mean, because trans means transition and it, what it ordinarily meant at the start of this meant medical and surgical transition. You, mm. You've taken hormone, yeah. hormones and had surgery in order to present as the opposite sex, yes. which of course that wouldn't be part of history because there no. wasn't medicine, there wasn't the means no. to do that. Yes. You know, uh, but now it just means being dressing as the opposite sex or being, it, it can mean anything. Well, it, it, essentially it means having an inner gendered soul, doesn't yeah. it? It's a religious, yes. it's, a, it's an article of faith, isn't yeah. it? If I say that my soul is female, is, yeah. is, is uh, you know, female, then you have to accept that. And if you don't, then you hate me. Yeah. That's, it's as simple as that. It's that Kafkaesque catch yeah. thing that I could, we, we come back to again. One thing is that it's certainly not the case that in order to be trans, you, you generally have your uh, genital reassignment. No, 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 no. Because many of them just don't even bother with that anymore. anymore. You don't even no. have to shave. Yes. You don't yeah. have to do anything. <coughs> it's, it's just a description of. It's essentially saying I'm complicated. Mm. You know, but the point mm. is, everybody Look at is. Me. Yeah, but Look it, we at were me. all complicated. Yes, <laughs> and yeah. it, but it's like that they think they're more complicated than anyone else, and they need to have that validated mm. and recognised. Right. So attention seeking, really. Uh, yes. I yes. think as well, it, it's 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 lost souls. It's people who who are who don't have a, a lot. Go sometimes, you know, don't have a lot going for them. People who were bullied at school. It's it's one way of saying yes. Not only am I complicated, but I'm special. You don't understand me, mm. um, and, and I'm and I'm and I'm pushing against the tide of ordinary people. And of yeah. course, it's the most ordinary thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I think uh, you know uh, we could just because uh, we are, are going to be discussing some of various different programs about immigration. For mm. example, mm. if we can just you know sort of say a bit about it, because this week we had record figures, mm -hmm. 606,000 net, net. Um, uh, but gross up was 1.2 million, mm. right? When you take off the people who left, mm. we get the net figure. They're obsessed with net figures. They always use net figures, mm. right? 606,000, but whichever way you cut it, that's the biggest we've ever had, mm. um, I think, ever. Mm. Um, what's your reaction to that? I just find it so, I've sort of checked out of this, I don't, because really? I find it so demoralising, I don't yeah, even want to, yeah. I remember, but I think it was prior to the Funny pandemic, my sister said that, yeah, actually, it's, it's, it's yeah. too difficult to face, yeah, I think it's, <laughs> I've, I remember prior to the pandemic, I think it must have been in, in 2019, when the figure was a quarter of a million, it was two, 250,000, mm. and I remember that feeling like ridiculous, mm. given how all the things that we were facing, and given that it's post Brexit, and you know, people voted for Brexit to curb immigration, and the, and the Tories came out quite strongly and said, we're going to reduce 
that number, that 250,000 number. Yeah. And people were saying, you know, you should halt immigration completely. And some people were saying you need to reduce it to 100,000. And there was all debate about what number is too much mm, or too little. Yeah. Fast forward, you know, three years. Uh, and we're now looking at 500,000, 600,000. So it's, mm. it's almost doubled. Mm. And you just, I, it's almost like it's unreal. I, I can't mm. quite... Yeah. Um, like I said, I've sort of checked out. It, it's it's so demoralising and so disappointing, and um, you, you you can't even really get your head around that figure. Yeah. I mean, the, the it's apparently a figure the size of Manchester. I was gonna, I was going to say just to put it in context. Um, Stoke on Trent has uh, two hundred odd thousand, I think two hundred and five thousand, a population of two hundred and five thousand. So the net figure mm. is three towns the size of Stoke on yeah. Trent yeah. this year. That's on yeah. top of five hundred thousand last year. Yeah. Um, I, I think, yeah, Amy, you're right. You know, they, they they've been saying this since pre-pandemic, but actually, they've been they've been talking about bringing immigration down since 2010 yeah. and they haven't achieved it mm. in any single year apart from when when the world uh, stopped mm. during was it 2021 i think anybody who votes conservative labor lib to any any of the main parties anybody who votes any of those parties What's locking up? It's mm. it's yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. it's yeah. it's the stupidest thing you can <coughs> possibly do. And if you vote for those yeah. parties, you are part of the problem. Yeah, I think it is. It is I mean, these, these you say about getting your head around. It, it's trying to convince people that this is historically without precedent. Well, yeah, this yeah, isn't I know. this isn't just sort of like high immigration numbers, mm. which is how it's reported. Mm. This is like population movement on a grand scale. Mm. I mean, and the betrayal. Mm. Well, I mean, that's it. It's gaslighting. It's unbelievable. You know, the, when, the, when yeah. but the, Rishi Sunak today, I think, as we're recording this, has said, uh, well, immigration is high, but, but it's not out of control. That's the equivalent of an alcoholic saying, <laughs> Yeah, I'm I drinking three it. three yeah. bottles of <laughs> brandy, <laughs> but it's not out of control. I'm not an yeah, alcoholic. Yeah. It's 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 yeah. that kind of well. On mm. the one hand, you can call it denial. I I prefer to call it gaslighting and and just yeah. just mm. plain manipulation and lies. Yeah. In sort of preparation for this figure coming out, um, Rishi said that he's gonna he's gonna curb immigration by reducing postgraduate foreign students from bringing their dependents over, which was a policy that was brought un mm. made easier under the Tories anyway. Yes, so yeah. their, their, uh, their approach to immigration is now just, just rolling back something that they brought in. Mm. It's, it's like the transfer, I mean, it's like three steps forward, one step back, three steps forward. Yes, it, but it, the thing is with, this, with that particular thing, with, I think most people didn't even know, no. right? <laughs> yes. That actually students up to a certain degree Degree level is well, it a PhD? I think it's, under yeah, PhD? I think, I think it's, it's postgraduate taught can can bring uh, can bring family in. That's that's one year, and that's what MA. they say they're going to deal with, is yeah, it? That's yeah. what and they don't do that anyway. I know we have lots and lots mm. of international yes. students at w where I work, and and those 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 students who are coming in for a year, they don't tend to bring their, their families over, no. mm. right? It's the it's the research students, it's the PhDs that sometimes do, but focusing on this is it's not going to make any yes, difference exactly. whatsoever yeah. that's the point yeah. they're taking the kind yeah. of smaller bit aren't yeah. they mm -hmm. admittedly quite a sensation one in the sense that people didn't know but this is the other thing betrayal brexit betrayal yeah. yes yeah. but also on top of that deception with the tories saying of course we're being dumped but in fact they've actually been actively yeah. easing yeah. all of the requirements for entry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's it's wicked it's mm. it's it's well i think I, I struggle to find words for it because mm. like you say mm. you you just it's so worrying because you become so demoralized mm. you it's not that you accept it it's just that you feel totally helpless <laughs> in the face of it but i say that and on the one hand I, I i feel that but on the other hand it wouldn't take an awful lot for me to be out on the streets marching complaining mm. and and i'm surprised that, that that hasn't happened because it is the biggest betrayal uh, of, of the last but it 30 never years. has and happened the, yeah. and it the predictions are it's only going to get worse yeah. so it's, it's going to go up and up well they were kind of softening this up for next year yeah um, basically about another two million people over the next few years why that 
why you should stop at the next few years, I do not know. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming it will mm. just go and carry on. I mean, you know, cuts were seen in 2030 and they're announcing, oh, immigration is slightly down from three and a half to I mean, two million or but, something. But you, know. but you were a, a, a big and influential figure in, in, in Brexit. Mm. If, if you would have been told then mm. in mm. 2016 mm. what these figures are now yeah. Yeah. under a Tory government, what would your reaction well be? Uh, it's a good question I mean I think uh, basically site so wouldn't have believed wouldn't have believed it yeah. um, but I think that goes as well for the 18 million people who voted obviously mm. for for Brexit but it's not just about them you see because it's not just the Brexit voters uh, what is it 60 but a good two-thirds of the country 60% have wanted to get immigration mm. significantly down mm. for about mm. as long as I can mm. remember. Mm. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that there is just, it, what they're facing now is, is the fact that there is n has been no will, in fact, mm. positively the opposite. I mean, quite often people say, oh, well, majority of people now don't care so much about mm. this issue. Do, your, do people that you meet care about it? I mean, I, you, I'm talking about your. You yeah, know, your yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think so, but it, it often gets siloed off uh, in terms of when you talk about the NHS or housing or any other issue. That it should always be immigration affects every. Mm. It, it's yeah. affecting everything, mm. but it's mm. almost kind of like we fought really hard just to be able to have the conversation. I mean, that's what mm. Brexit was, mm. and now we can have the conversation, but it's sort of you have to ration it. You've got mm. you have a certain, you're allowed mm. to talk about it a little bit. But you can't be seen to be too focused on it, even though it is such a huge, I think, existential mm. crisis to this country. Oh, I, um, I think I, I, I feel that, that, like it's some people. I'm noticing people sort of saying that they don't feel like this is a home anymore. Like mm. they can't, they well, don't, they mm. don't feel any loyalty to country or city no. or town mm. because it's just like mm. an economic zone that people mm. use for resources. Well, exactly, that's exactly it. But you see, that's that's what uh, people like Robert. Putnam, the American writer, who wrote a great mm. book called Bowling Alone. Mm. Right? He's a sociologist, not mm. some right wing headbanger. Mm. But he said when you get super diversity, mm. you get a breakdown of trust, mm. all those things, mm. a sense of, you know, familiarity, whatever. Mm. Um, not just among, um, uh, uh, with different groups, but actually within those groups yeah. too. Mm. Right. Yes. You, mm. it, it kind of reverberates all around. It's, it's, it's the Roger Scruton thing, isn't it, of the nation state being home. Mm. And, and once that nation state becomes completely unrecognisable, mm. then it's no longer mm. home, yeah. you know. Mm. And I think there's something else to add on there. I think you can have either or. You can have mass immigration or you can have a workable NHS. You can't mm. have both. Yeah, exactly. A welfare state. You yeah. can't have both. Mm. You can't have. Uh, you can't pay pensions. You can't. You know. You you, you can't look after mm. people. You can't have that safety net if you've got mass immigration. I'm very worried by. You know, when you're saying people no longer see it at home. Uh, also, what I've detected in some people is actually that they're starting to dislike the country. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And and it's n they're not people who dislike the country. No, no, no. no but not it's like people. you know. It's saying you can't love someone who doesn't love themselves, you know, as the right. songs say. Right. Yes. It, yeah. if, a, if this country is so determined to obliterate itself, how well, can you possibly want to be part of so, it? So it is difficult, to, and you know, I'm massively patriotic, but it is difficult to, to, to like a country um, that is that where all of the institutions are completely and utterly mm. captured by woke, mm, okay? Mm, mm. It's difficult to like a country that you don't recognize anymore because the demographic is changing at such an incredible mm. rate. It's difficult to like a country that is founded on lies in terms of immigration. It, at, at the moment, policies are founded and, and, the, and the, uh, the, the national discourse is just one big lie. Yeah. Into, and that relates to everything we've talked about in terms of gender, in terms of immigration, in mm -hmm. terms of in terms of the main parties. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to come to terms with all of that stuff when 
what you tend to do is lead your own life in in your house with someone was talking about this weren't mm. they uh, with with your family with your friends and the things you love because everything else you yeah. don't recognize anymore. Yeah. I mean in answer to your question about if, if it's being talked about I mean I don't necessarily always hear the word immigration but I'm hearing more and more people talking about get out you know I want to get out of London get yeah. out of the country yeah, yeah, get yeah, out yeah. you know get away from you know just just sort of look mm. after yourself essentially mm. that that's the sort of thinking which mm. um, you know more and more people are just as you said just resenting the yes. country yes. as a whole and which is terrible that they should be brought to that stage yeah you know. mm. but anyway we did end up talking about it quite a bit mm. but, but the thing is, is this is going to be a recurring theme yeah. on, on our programs mm. of, uh, as indeed it should be mm. can't help it Thank you, Amy, for joining us. We do come back again, won't Thank you? you? Thank you as always, Philip. That's it for News Speak this week. We shall see you next time. Thank you. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.